Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. I recently purchased a lot of vintage lace and I intend to work my way through the entire lot making as many projects as I can think of. I hope you'll join me. The first project is this vintage lace angel Christmas ornament. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. I purchased this lot of vintage lace from one of my favorite groups on Facebook. And it just arrived and I'm pretty anxious to see what all is in here. Um, of course I did, you know, look at the photos fair, pretty carefully, but, um, you know, seeing it in real life, first of all, I'll say that it's a lot more than I imagined. The first thing that I will look for is pieces like this. This looks like a collar that are, um, you know, like a fabric and not just a length of lace. This looks like a jabot. And uh, let me just pick through this a little bit and uh, you can kind of play along. And then I'll come back with a few things and share my intentions. Whoa, this is a nice long piece of this beautiful lace. I feel like this is about six inches wide and the top edge is gathered. I think I'm going to go over to my iron and press this nice and flat and see what I have. I think this is going to be great for angels. This is the jabot and I think that I'm just going to kind of take it apart right here and I think that's going to be a great angel dress. This I'm not sure but I think I can work this into a design on a stuffed angel or maybe a stocking. This is very pretty. It's about two and a half inches wide. I have a lot of it. So I could do either little mini angel ornaments or I could use this for um, stuffed angels or even for stockings. This has a lot of potential because it's pretty and I have a lot of it. The same thing with this, this little piece of eyelet. I don't have a lot of it, but I mean, this could go down the front of a project or it could be the cuff or it could even be gathered up and just become a little angel like this. So lots of options with that one. Do we look at this? Oh, I don't know what this was, but it looks like some sort of a decorative element, but it's not, it's kind of, asymmetric like it's kind of attached on this side and not on this side and it almost looks like it could have been a bow but that would only have been half of the bow so I'm not sure what this is and I think I'm going to probably take it apart and then see what I have. I'm going to go to my iron and kind of uh, press these flat and take these things apart and see what I have. I'll be back. This was the jabot and I decided that I would um, cut it into four pieces. I think this is going to be just right for little angel. So this will be my first project. This is seven inches and then obviously this is longer, this little ruffled part. So I'm gonna fold this in half, right sides together, matching up the laces and the edges and I'm going to seam up this back. I'll turn it right side out and I think this is going to be really cute. We shall see. I have two sizes of bases. This is 25 millimeter. This is 20 millimeter. And of course you can find the instructions for the Rick Rack Ruby face in my Focus on Faces video. I have this roll of six inch tool. I will Cut off two lengths that when doubled over are longer than the dress. This particular spool of tool is, it's filmy. 
some tool is stiffer and some is more, I don't know, filmy, <laughs> I guess that's the word. Um, but any kind is fine. I've, I've never found anything that didn't work. This is 1 16th inch ivory satin ribbon. I just cut off a length of that, um, tie it around the center of these tool lengths. Nice little square knot. And now I'm pretty sure that the smaller face is about the right size. So I think I'm gonna use the 20 millimeter wooden bead for this. I have my sewing machine and my glue gun ready to go. I'm gonna thread the ribbon ends through the hole in the bead from the bottom to the top. So make sure that the face is oriented correctly. And then I'm gonna add a little spot of hot glue in the back right here, like that. And then I just slide that face down so that it's the tool is secured inside the hole in the bead. And then I'll tie this off at the top for a hanging loop. There we go. That looks good. That's a good start. Now with a needle and thread, I will gather up the top edge of the dress. I'm using a quilting thread, doubled over, doubled strand of quilting thread. I tied a knot in the end of my doubled strand of quilting thread, and now I'll gather up that top edge. First, I'll secure the knot in the seam allowance right there, the center back. I will do a running stitch along the top edge. Now I'm going to insert the, the uh, head and the tool body into the dress. And I'll pull that tight around the neck. That looks good. I do like the proportion of that size of the 20 millimeter bead. And then I'll wrap this. I'm making sure that the seam is in the back. There's the seam. I'm gonna wrap this a few times and stitch through back and forth just to make sure that the, um, the dress is secure to the tool inside. There we go. And then I'll knot it off in the back. And then I'm gonna trim this extra tool. Now for the collar, I do have a couple of options. These are all from the same lot of lace. This one would be cute. This, I have a lot of this, that would be great. And then one more. This piece is very small. I don't have much of it, but it's enough for one angel. So I always like a contrast. I don't want the lace to blend in with the dress. So I think this is too much of a blend. I think this one will be nice. Or this one. I think I'll do this one. I'm gonna cut off about 12 inches of this and gather it up for the collar. I'll fold back the beginning and sort of loop my needle through. And then I'm just gonna sew through the holes in the header. Just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go, this will be her collar. I'm sewing the ends together in the back. Then I'll try to sort of distribute the fullness so that there are the same amount of gathers on each side. And then I'll stitch back and forth a few times. I stitch through the center just to make sure that the, the gathers won't move. They just kind of stay right there and um, before I go on, I usually like to add a little accent right there beneath her chin. So it could be a button or a little applique. 
My intention is to use the items that I got in this in this lot of laces. And this is a part of it. So I kind of like that because there's a contrast between the color. And then we could still add something to the center here. Here are some options. This is too big, but it might work for something else. And then any one of these buttons would be good. Um, I like this little pink flower bead, but um, I'm sure that my needle won't get through the little hole. So I think I'm going to do this little pink flower bead and I'm gonna to switch to a smaller needle. First, I wanna secure this little applique with a couple of stitches. I could glue it, but I don't like to get this too jammed up with glue because then if I have to add something by sewing, the needle won't go through. That looks good. This is a doubled strand of quilting thread. I'm gonna get that bead right into the center of that applique. That looks good. I like that. I'll secure the thread in the back. Okay, let's make the hair. I'm using my favorite um, loopy mohair. It's very fine. I think I'm going to loop this uh, six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. That looks good. And the instructions for this hair technique are in the Rick Rack Ruby, Ruby's, Ruby's hair technique video. Going to make two bundles like that. There's one. I'll describe it this time a little better. I'm going to hold it like this and wrap like a figure eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then Cutting off a generous tail. I'm going to take the top piece and wrap it around, making a complete circle. And then the original end, I use that to tie it off in the center. Like this, just tying off the center of the figure eight. Just be sure to leave yourself a gen generous tails. It just makes it a lot easier if you have a nice generous tail. So I have two bundles, um, six loops on each side of each bundle. So I'm gonna start by covering the back of the head with hot glue, a generous amount of glue. I'm gonna press one bundle into the top of the head behind the ribbon loop. And then I'm just going to press all that hair into the back of her head. I want every little bit of it to be pressed into the glue. It seems kind of funny, but if you remember the wing, the wings will be covering, concealing most of the back of the hair. Really what you want is just for the, the ends of the hair to show. Then the second one, we have to be a little bit more careful with the front. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue right there at the front in front of the ribbon loop. I'm gonna press the knot, the center, into that little bit. And then I will squeeze some more glue out here on the side of her head. Just a line of glue like that. And then twist this and press it into that line. That looks good. And then repeat for this side. A little bit of glue, twist and press. That looks good. 
Now for the halo. I have some 20 gauge gold wire, some wire cutters, about two and a half inches of wire. I'm using gold wire. And then I'm using my thimble to shape it into a U like this. I'll add a drop of hot glue to either end like that. And then I'm just gonna press those ends with the glue into her hair on either side of her head like that. So it looks like a halo. Now for the wings, I have options. <laughs> I have options in size and in the paper that I wanna use. Oh, I think I'll just use that one. Let's see, I did pull out a pink one. I thought that might be fun to match the um, bead. But this one is good. This is the first time I've used this paper for wings and it was not cardstock, it was just paper. Let's see if I can find it. Um, here it is. So it was this Kathy Holden Flea Market Finds Neutrals Palette Sampler. And like I say, it's just paper. It's not really cardstock. So I sprayed the back of it with adhesive and then I stuck it to a piece of white cardstock and then, then I cut out the scallop circle with my die cutting machine. And there are instructions for this in the Rick Rack Ruby Focus on Wings video. But anyway, just briefly, I cut out the scallop circle, folded it in half, and I zigzagged around the edge. If you don't have a die cutting machine, if you don't like this, you can just cut a circle. You could cut the scallops by hand, or you can cut a circle um, using a, a CD as a template and um, and then cut out the edge with some scalloping shears or decorative shears. There's lots of options and those options are provided to you in my Focus on Wings video. I like this one. It is about three and a half inches in diameter. I'm gonna squeeze out a little penny of glue right here. Obvious that I didn't quite get the design centered but I think it still looks good. Now I'm pressing the back of her head into that penny of glue. It's important to get the wings way up behind the head and not to glue it down here. Too low. Then for the last touch, I think I wanna add some ribbon streamers so here, I just had this scrap of ribbon and I thought, oh, that would be good. I think I'm just going to add this right here. I think that's nice. All right, so I folded it in half. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue and then I'll place that underneath the collar and then trim this to the hem. That looks good. And our first design is complete. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.